everybody. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz this week. I am Jeff Antoniak. So what I wanna do is talk about a little stylistic difference between swing music and bebop music. So style, the style of swing, let's call that sort of 30s, 40s, think big band kind of stuff, and then bebop. So 40s into the 50s, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, all that. So now, of course, there was a continuum between that music. There were people that played in both styles. It happened on the same street in the same city, but there was this kind of change that went on. Now, 50, 60, 70 years later, um, we get expected to play those songs side by side in a set. And so I hear this from some of my students, a lot of the people inside Jazzwire is, how do we play? How, how, are, how do we sound convincing between these styles? And there's some very uh, tangible mechanical things that we can do. So I wanna jump into this with you. Uh, I also wanna talk about four upcoming one day workshops, online workshops. We offered 20 of these in the year 2020. And uh, we're gonna be doing more this year, four great workshops. I'll tell you about those in just a second. I'd love to have you register. They book up within a handful of days. So today would be the day. Okay, so swing music. So I'm talking about Duke Ellington. How about this one, uh, in a mellow tone? <laughs> Man, I love that tune. Beautiful song. Uh, very lyrical, very romantic sounding, all that kind of stuff. Now, how about a Charlie Parker tune like um, Scrapple from the Apple? <laughs> All right, so they sound different, right? One, the, the bebop tune had more notes in it. The bebop tune was a little faster. The first uh, Ellington tune was a little slower. It was a little more lyrical. So, so we're using words like that, but swing music was plenty fast too. And Charlie Parker didn't play everything fast, so it's not a tempo-related thing. And so lyrical, there's plenty of lyrical beautiful melodies inside bebop. So, so how do we talk about what the difference was? Did you notice some differences there? We could talk about my tone, absolutely, that when we're playing swing music, it might be a rounder sound, again, a more lyrical, romantic, sweet sound, whatever that means. Um, with bebop, it might be sort of a harder sound. So that's all important stuff. But there's one really important thing that I sort of want to get to. And I tell you what, before we get there, let me tell you quickly about these four workshops. And you can sign up at the Schedulista website. Uh, these workshops are $35 each, or uh, all four for 120 bucks, or if you can't make it for the live workshop, $20 for the video recording. And so uh, what we have coming up on March 4th, it's a Thursday, um, altered triad pairs. So you folks love checking out the triad pairs. That's one of our most popular sets of videos, so triad pairs. On March 11th, rhythm, time, and groove. That's what jazz is about. And so many really good students aren't quite sure the difference between having good rhythm, having good time, and then how do we groove? And are they all the same thing or do they come in a particular order? So we're gonna work on that and talk about how to practice that stuff. The following week on March 18th, playing out with pentatonic. So that's a very, very cool topic that a lot of my students have been getting traction with. And the last of the workshops for this series, arranging for the jazz small group. So when you hear a, a great group, it could be a pickup group at a jazz club, and it sounds professional from the get-go. And there's an intro, even though they didn't talk about it, and they do play an ending that's together, but that, that group has never maybe played together. How do they do that stuff? How do they make the songs not sound all the same? So it'll be really sort of quick and dirty arranging that we can do with just a quartet. We're not talking about arranging, you know, writing for four horns or anything like that. So hope you can join us. These workshops are 75 minutes long. Um, there's only 15 of us, so lots of back and forth. It's not like some video thing like this where you don't get to be involved. It's meant to be back and forth. So visit the site, sign up, only 15 people in each of these four videos. So I hope, uh, hope we'll be working together.
Okay, so take a look at this PDF for today, and I think you're gonna see what's going on. I'm talking about how do we end a phrase. When I was playing the Duke Ellington tune, versus the Charlie Parker tune. A longer note on the first swing tune, and then that chopped off bebop sound. Ba doo ba doo ba da bebop, bebop. That's what's going on. So look at the PDF. Item number one, can you play this line? That simple, and we wanna taper that last note. The first time, I put a little vibrato on it. Didn't mean to, but I did. The second time, I left the vibrato off. Either works. But that idea of a long phrase ending, that's more like swing. That is lyrical. That is romantic sounding. A bebop version. That bop, bebop, that bebop ending, it's short. It's a little harsher, and people would call it urban, or they would call it gritty, or they would call it rhythmic, but it's not exactly romantic, and it's not exactly lyrical, and that's not really how the human voice would normally sing something. That was one of the big innovations of bebop. So when you're playing a bebop tune, and you're not snapping those last notes of every phrase off, you're doing it wrong. So that's what I have to coach some people, is to get those phrase endings tighter. Here's the thing, that's not easy to do. Whether you're muting strings with your right hand or lifting the string with your left hand, if you're a bass player or a guitar player, or what it takes on a wind instrument to do that, to hit a note and have it stop dead without going sharp or flat or squeak or miss pitch or whatever, that's a big deal. So I'm not here today to talk about the technique of trombone or flute or saxophone, but the musical concept. Listen to it. Listen to your favorite players play and see if they're playing with longer phrase endings or shorter. Perhaps they're mixing them up. It's a very cool thing to listen to. So you need to practice the long notes. That's what we see here in item number three, those long notes. Not at all an easy thing to do. Now, if you're playing piano, sure, the piano is going to sustain as long as it's going to sustain. But here's the thing. You actually have to work on lifting the key. When are you going to lift that key? And the opposite, of course, would be a bebop thing, right? So that idea of tapering long notes is really a big deal, and especially on a wind instrument. Guitar, bass, they have a natural sustain, so we have to think about the release of that long note after its natural decay. On a horn, with our voice, we have to actively taper. We have to make it sound like it's decaying. Not easy to do, but I'm challenging you to uh, practice that a little bit. So let's do this. Let's look at the last item on the sheet, and this is more of a bebop sort of phrasing, and we have to think about the tightness of that last note. Hopefully that sounded easy to do. It's not. To be able to play long, short, to play accented and more accented, do dot, bebop. And by the way, that's where the phrase bebop came from. So I got to work with Dizzy Gillespie for a week as a college student, and he was in town and he worked with our band a bunch during that week. And he told this story of where did uh, that term bebop come from? I heard this from Dizzy Gillespie in my ear, now I'm telling you. I don't know if it's a true story, because Dizzy kind of liked to, uh, he was a great orator. Um, I don't even care if it's a true story, because I heard it from Dizzy and it makes a lot of sense. He was talking about he and Charlie Parker playing at Minton's Playhouse on 52nd Street in New York City. And, um, and a reviewer from the New York Times or whatever came to listen to what these crazy young kids were doing, this you know new music that was being played. Um, and they were playing what we know as bebop. The reviewer hated it. It was 
angular and you couldn't dance to it and it was harsh and their sounds weren't pretty and it was abrupt and ugh. And so uh, the next day the, the writer wrote this scathing review and called it this terrible bebop music, which was supposed to be sort of a put down. It was bebop, right? Um, but the reviewer heard something important. He heard the phrase endings and how different it was from the tapered phrase endings of what came before, bebop. So Dizzy told that story. And so he got on stage the next night and said, well, we're gonna play some of that bebop music that the, uh, that the Times liked so much or whoever it was. Um, so I, again, don't know if it's a true story, but I heard it from Dizzy. And I love that story and I've told it a hundred times because it lets us know what the phrase endings are supposed to be. It's not beba, it's not that, it's bebop. That energy, we go to the end of the phrase. And it's a challenge on a lot of these instruments. So I tell you what, I want you to be listening for this in the music that you love to listen to. And yes, good musicians are going to vary it. You'll hear a swing musician play a short phrase. Yes, that'll happen. In general, long phrases. Bebop musicians are gonna be playing short phrases. They may play five or six short phrases in two measures, in three measures, a lot of little short phrases. Of course, you'll hear a long note every once in a while in bebop too. You get the sense of it. So this is huge to being shifting between those two closely related but entirely different styles. Articulation, but specifically the end of the note. It's a big deal. All right, and now I hope I'm gonna see you at one of these uh, four workshops or all four. Lots of folks sign up for all four. And as I said, they happen on a Thursday afternoon, 1 to 2.15 New York City time. So wherever you're at in the world, uh, if that doesn't work for you, you can get the recording, the video recording of everything that goes on, including all the questions and answers uh, for just 20 bucks. So I hope you uh, take advantage of that and practice this stuff. I think you're gonna find that it made a lot of sense to you as I was talking to you about it, but I think you're gonna find it's uh, a little more challenging to pull off on your instrument. This is gonna make you a deeper, more professional sounding musician. Give it a try.